Hey everyone, welcome to Magnitude. This is Moinak Das Gupta and today we have came to the second video of semiconductor physics. On the previous video, we have discussed about the conductors, semiconductors and insulators and also differentiated them with respect to conductivity, resistivity. So we, if you have not watched that video, then please watch it. I will give the link in the description box and then come to this video. In this video, we will going to discuss about the free electrons, about the holes and also about the motion of these free electrons and the holes. So if you are new to our channel, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon to get the latest updates of our channel. So not wasting any time, let's begin. So on the last day, I have given the example of semiconductor that is one of the very important example that is silicon. In silicon, we represent silicon as SI and you all know that the atomic number of silicon is 14 means Z equals to 14. The atomic number of silicon is 14. So by this thing we can say that what will be the electronic configuration of silicon. From class 10 concept only we can say it can be written as 2 comma 8 comma 4 2 plus 8 10 plus 4 14. From the concepts of class uh, 11 and 12 we can write it as 3s2 3p2. It, this is the last part okay the first part I have not written I have written only the last part. So I can see that the last, the valence shell, you know the last shell of the elect electronic configuration is known as the valence shell. So the valence shell of the uh, silicon consists of only four electrons. That means the outermost shell, the outermost shell of silicon will be of four electrons. So I have drawn this thing. This one is known as lattice. What is this is known as? This is known as lattice. L A double T I C E. This one is known as lattice. Lattice of silicon. This is not an isolated atom. Okay. We talk when we talk about the isolated atom, we mean that only a silicon, only single atom of silicon is present. But in this case, not a single silicon atom is present. You know that we need more four electrons to make it as an inert shell. So to do to do this thing, silicon atoms will make bond with the other silicon atoms present in the side of itself. Means the adjacent silicon atoms will make a bond with this silicon atom present in the center. So I am considering in this case, I am considering this silicon as the major, and I am describing all for the full lattice with the help of this silicon. Okay. So let us consider that. The blue dots are the four electrons of this silicon atom and these are also the atoms of the other silicons which are present in the adjacent of this silicon atom. So you know they form a covalent bond between each other. See here they form a covalent bond, here also a covalent bond, here also a covalent bond and here also a covalent bond. I have kept these things empty but this is a continuous process so I have not given drawn all this part but this same drawing will be done in this part, this part and this part and this is a continuous process for all the atoms present in this crystal. So my point is that this you know what is covalent bond the covalent bond means the sharing of electrons so they share their electrons between them and form a particular lattice of silicon atoms so my point is this lattice is only formed in the at the time of 0 k temperature k means kelvin for 0 k temperature only this lattice remains stable that means what happens when the temperature increases. Here comes the concept of free electrons. So what happens when this temperature increases? So let us see when the temperature, when the temperature increases means when this temperature increases from 0 K, then the covalent bond between the silicon atom of the center silicon atom and the adjacent silicon atoms, they gradually break means this covalent bond is already broken and this electron from this covalent bond jumps outside. So these electrons come here. So let us consider this electron come here and 
here forms a vacant position means no electron is present here so it remains a vacant position here this electron is known as free electron when all the covalence bond break and the electrons from its covalent bond comes out and this free this electron is known as free electron so when the temperature rises then generally this covalent bond breaks and when the covalent bond breaks the electron comes outside and these are known as free electrons one very important topic that is this free electron naturally helps for the conduction of current so we call this free electrons we call this free electrons as conduction electrons so the other name of this free electrons are conduction electrons so this is a very famous name and very commonly used name also so i have described what are free electrons so the concept of free electrons are clear now so here comes the next concept the next concept is what are holes we are talking about holes in semi in natural in metals we are not talking about holes but when the topic comes for the semiconductor then we are talking about holes so now the point is what are these holes okay holes are those deficiency of electrons in a lattice or in a crystal these are known as holes means when this electron comes out and form free electron then generally here forms a vacant space so this vacant space means the deficiency of electron in a particular space this vacant space is known as holes so the deficiency of electron is known as hole one very important thing i would like to mention that holes are imaginary concepts so for describing semiconductor very easily or it is very helpful for draw the currents of the semiconductor we are describing holes although this is not a real particle but we will say that those particles which forms when the vacancy of electron is done in a particular place that is known as holes so now there is another important concept that is what is the movement of holes and what is the movement of the electrons i would like to mention one thing that is both the holes and the electrons both the holes and the electrons they both contribute to form current means the flow of current is contributed by both the holes and the electrons now my topic is that how we can see the motion or the flow of the holes and the flow of the electrons so let's see it's very easy so it's nothing very much difficult it's very easy just you have to know the concepts that how we can see you can imagine all these things and i am definitely sure that it's not going to be very tough so let's see what happened when this electron when suppose you are thinking of this electron now when this electron comes out here a hole is formed naturally you know from now that here a hole is formed and this electron comes out so what happens this electron comes out in the adjacent cell if there is also a hole then what will happen this electron will go to this hole because it will be attracted and it will move to this hole then again another hole will be formed this this will be formed and another hole will be formed again this electron which electron is present here means if this if there is also another electron and another hole is also present this electron will move here and again this hole will be present if there is another electron present in another lattice then here this electron will move here and again this one will form another hole so what is going here the thing is electrons are moving from one place to another place means electron are moving from here here again one hole is formed here then again the electron is moving from here again one hole is formed here again electron is moving from here again one hole is form, forming here so what is happening the ha thing is electrons are moving and generally the holes are moving in this way so we can say that the motion of the flow of electron is directly responsible for the formation of holes and also the motion of the creation of these holes and one very important thing you should know that 
you know these things previously also but i will make this thing clear with the concept of holes that is you you can say also you can say in which direction the electrons flow if the electrons flow in this direction then what will be the direction of the current obviously you will say the direction of the current will be in this direction you know the flow of electron is opposite to the direction of the flow of current but the flow of holes we represent holes by h will be in the same direction of the currents that means the flow of holes will be in the same direction of this current the flow of direction of current and holes are same and the direction of the electron is always different from the direction of the holes and from the direction of the current so i think this topic is clear till now next we will move to the concepts of energy band and energy levels in my next video and if you like this video then don't forget to hit the like button and also share this video with others thank you everyone for watching this video mm -hmm.